Get ready, my mega advanced seventh graders. This is a doozy. I'm going to teach you today how to write and solve variable equations, which is what we talked about for several weeks in your self-paced unit before this, to find missing angles. We're going to combine our last unit, our current unit. Get ready. It's a biggie. Go ahead and make this the title on the next page in your math notebook. When you've done that, mark it, close it, and really give me that brain power. All right, so up till now, we have talked about complementary angles. Those are angles whose ang uh, add up to 90 degrees. We've talked about supplementary angles. They add up to 180, or a straight angle. And vertical angles, they are across a, an intersection from each other, and they have the same measurement. In math, we use the word congruent in geometry to mean same or equal You measure. We've also, don't forget, talked about adjacent angles. Um, those are angles that share a same side. So we kind of, you know, this angle and this angle are adjacent angles because they share a vertex and a side. So the complementary angles are also adjacent. They're special adjacent angles. So are these. Uh, these are not. They're across an intersection with each other. So adjacent angles here would be like the 140 and the one next to it. Those would be adjacent because they share this side. And this, but the vertical angles are not. So that's what we've talked about adjacent, complementary, supplementary, and vertical. So, all right, we're going to look at something like this today. Holy cow. Calculate the value of x in the missing angle. I'm even going to say and the measurement of the angle. I didn't type that in, but we're going to do that too. All right. So, um, first is you just look at it and I'm going to say, okay, what do I, what do I have here? I've got a 35 degree angle and then I've got this very weird <laughs> algebraically represented angle 4x plus 7 degrees. And we want to find x, what is that equal to? Find the value of x in the missing angle. And then I also add it on, let's just go ahead and find the measurement of this angle. Um, that's not as tough because we can see that they are um, complementary angles here. So that's the first thing. Like I said, I'm going to start looking in complicated problems like this. Do I see any vertical angles? No. Do I see any supplementary angles? No. Do I see any complementary angles? I do. There's a right angle measure right there. So together, those are complementary angles. So when I look at this, I want to find this value of x. And here's the information I have to do that. Since those are complementary angles, I know that if I add 35 plus this other angle that has this weird measurement, which is 4x plus 7, if I add those two angles together, they should equal 90 degrees because they are complementary angles there. So pause here if you need to and make sure you believe me on that one, that 35 plus this, whatever that is, should equal 90 degrees. So now that I've done that, now look what I've got. I've got a variable equation that you know how to solve because we just spent a whole lot of time learning how to solve these. Uh, I'm going to use the inverse operation strategy to solve this. Like this. So I think the first thing I would do to solve this particular one is I would combine like terms on the left. So 35 plus 7 is 42. This, there's nothing to combine with my uh, variables, is equal to 90. Now I've got a variable being multiplied and added. So my first step there, um, remember we do these in reverse gems order. So I would subtract and add before I multiply and divide. So I'm going to subtract 42 from both sides. And that means 4x is equal to 90 minus 40 is 50 minus 2 is 48. Last step, x is being multiplied by 4, so I'll divide by 4. And I'll find that x equals 12. So this is weird. It's like combining algebra and geometry together. So now I've figured out that x equals 12. Um, two ways to figure out the missing angle. Uh, one thing I can do is now that I know x equals 12, I can just substitute it in and figure that out. Say 4 times 12 
plus 7, uh, that is 48 plus 7 is 55 degrees. So that's one way I can do it. Now that I've figured out x, I can just substitute x in and find it out. The other way I could have done it, I actually didn't even really need to go through all that. I could have just said, well, 35 and whatever this angle is, make 90. And that would have to be 55 because 35 plus 55 is 90. So either of those would work just fine. Two different ways you could find that missing angle. All right, I'm actually, I know I always say this at the end. I'm actually going to tell you to pause here now. This was a lot, y'all. This is to go from angles over to algebra. Uh, that's a big thing. So if you need to pause and rewatch this example again, I would highly recommend it because this is already pretty advanced. Uh, and the next one's only going to be even more so. So make sure you have a firm handle on this and we'll move on when you are ready to do it. So we do. So open up that math notebook and let's do this one together. So pause now and draw the diagram and write the question, and we'll work on it together. So what is the value of x in the picture below? And actually, I'm even going to same thing. I'm going to add, and what are the angle measurements? because I want to find that. I want to make sure you know both. You'll notice like here, if you know X, you still don't know the angle. There's a little bit of work left to do. So what's the value of X and what are the angle measurements? So, whew. All right. So we're going to have to see what we've got a handle on here. First thing, do you see any vertical angles? Um, don't write this because they're, they're there. But let's wait till you know what's helpful. So here I see lots of vertical angles. Um, you know, 3X is vertical to this one. That's a vertical angle of 3x would be the same, but that wouldn't really help me much. Um, 100 degrees is vertical to this one, I believe. Yeah, the red and the blue, but that wouldn't really help me much. Uh, and x is vertical to this one, but that as well wouldn't help me very much. So there are vertical angles, but they're not helpful in this problem. Supplementary angles, this is where the uh, the help's going to come on this one. Because you'll notice x and this 100 degree angle and this 3x together, those three angles together are supplementary. They make a straight angle through this point. So this is really where I'm going to benefit in this problem is from knowing that. So what I know is since they are supplementary, x plus 100 plus 3x, those together are supplementary and would add up thus to 180 degrees. They make a straight angle. Even if you didn't remember that word supplementary, you can still see that this is a 180 degree angle. It's a straight angle. So now I can use this algebraic equation to figure out what x is. You're welcome to use either strategy I taught you. I taught you the drawing strategy and I taught you the inverse operation strategy. Uh, I will typically use the inverse operation strategy from now on just because that's what your future math teachers are probably going to use. So I'm going to lean more that way, but I don't mind at all if you want to draw and use the, uh, the drawing strategy. Works totally fine. So what I would do to solve this equation I would combine like terms, uh, that would be 4x and 100 equals 180. Now as I look at this, x is, has 100 being added and it's being multiplied by 4. The thing I do first to solve that equation is subtract 100. Now x is being multiplied by 4, so the inverse of that is dividing by 4, and x equals 20. So notice, I've found x. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm done. I found the value of x, but let's make sure we finish up the problem. So one of the angles actually is x. So this angle is 20 degrees, because x is 20 degrees. This angle we still have to find. Sometimes you'll stop and be like, oh, I found it. X is 20, so this angle is 20. But not quite. There's a little bit of work left to be done. If we substitute that x back in to 3x, 
then we get three times 20 makes this a 60 degree angle. And if we verify, that should be correct, right? 20 plus 100 plus 60 does in fact equal 180 degrees. All right, y'all, if you just tried to write and keep up with me and weren't thinking here, again, go back and pay attention to this example so that this really makes sense to you. These are tough, tough, tough. You've got to know all this business about angles, and then you've got to be able to write an equation that's going to get you the answer, and then you have to be able to solve the equation to get the answer. Y'all, this is a lot to ask. So please, this example, the last example, if you need to double check these to get a handle on it so you feel confident before you, you do together tomorrow, please, please, please do it. Um, if not, and miraculously I was able to make sense of this to you in 11 minutes quickly, way to go. Way to apply the brain power because this is really advanced, guys. See you tomorrow.